Hi guys, it's Katie here again from Bella Creativa and I'm going to do another page in the album that we have been making or I've been making uh, using the Brodery SVG files uh, that I have designed. Uh, SVG files are scalable vector graphic files that you can use in um, cutting machine software for um, machines like the Cricut, the Silhouette or the Brother Scan and Cut. So they are an instant digital download, so you can download them straight away and start creating. So I've created this little book, and inside this little book, it, it are uh, pictures um, of all of the pieces that are included in the SVG files. There are 30 files, and it includes everything you need to make an album from start to finish, including the cover in the spine and lots of different size pockets and flips, belly bands, doors, inserts and tags, everything you need is right here. So what I think I'll do is just start doing the next page in our album. So this is the album that I have been making. This is the uh, size that the SVG files come in, but the beauty of SVG files is that one of the beauties, there's lots of them, but they're scalable. So they come in this size and if you don't make any changes to the files then you will make an album which is seven inches by seven inches with a three inch spine. It has six pages. The pages themselves are just a little bit bigger than six inches by six inches, but the um, mats for the base pages are six inches by six inches, which means that you can cut all the pieces, uh, all the mats for this uh, album from our six inch paper pad. So we have done a few pages so far, and we haven't embellished them yet. We've just put the pages together and matted them. So I'm gonna go back at the end and add all the inserts and tags, and then mat them. So that's where we're up to. We're up to this page here. So I will just put this to the side and show you which um, pieces I've cut out today. So I always start with my base page mat, which is this piece here, C2. So all of the pieces themselves I cut from cardstock, and these are the blue pieces. So I'm using today this cardstock by Recollections in cream. 65 pound 176 GSM so I've cut all my pages out of that all my pockets and flips and belly bands those sorts of things um, I've cut out of that cardstock for the paper collection that I'm using to map it I'm using a digital collection by Nick Wicks called Always and Forever when I um, purchase a um, digital pack like this I like to print it out in this wallet size um, print page so that I can see all the page design straight away and also the ephemera and there's lots of bits of ephemera that come with this pack. So I will put the, the link to this paper collection in the description box in case you would like to purchase that one for yourself or any of the other digital paper packs that they have. So that's what I'm using today. So. To start with, I have cut out the base page mat C2, which is this one here, and I have already inked up around the edges. And I always write on the back what the piece is so that I know in case I don't end up using it or it gets lost or you know something like that, then I know exactly what piece it corresponds with. So if I look at this, I can see C2 is a base page mat, so I know it goes on a base page. So I've cut out one of those. Then I have cut out some pockets. In this instance, I've cut out two of the E2s out of the cardstock, and that's these two here. So I'll put those to the side. And then I have, because I'm going to use those as flips and not pockets today, I have cut out four of the mats, which is E6. So they've got E6 written on the back. I've cut out four of those, and I've already inked around those. The edges of those as well and then I have cut out this one here this pocket here F2 and I have two of those and I've inked up some of that but um, not all of it because some of these tabs I'm going to trim off so 
So I've cut out two F2s and then I have cut out the mats for the F2s which are F8 and I have cut out six of those. So that's my six um, mats in F8 and I pinked around the edges of those as well. And then I have cut out two of these um, pockets F3 and that's these two here and I have cut out four of the mats for those which are F9 so there's four of those there and finally I have cut out two of the F5 so that's these two here F5 and two of the mats that go on the F5 which is the F11 and there's two of those there so that's all the pieces that I've cut out today so I will put this aside because we don't need that anymore and I'll bring out my um, mat which is just a shelf protector liner thingy that I bought from the hardware store and the first thing I shall do is go back to right to the start pull this aside and bring out these two E2s. Now they are pockets and they have these tabs on each side but I don't want those because I'm going to use it as a flip and I'm going to flip it on the long side like that so I need to cut off the tabs on both sides of these two pieces and I've already put little crosses there to remind me to do that so I'm going to bring those out and bring out my cutting board and I'm just going to line up on that score line which has already been done for me by my Cricut and turn those off and they just go in the bin and this is basically all the cutting that I have to do because the, S the um, SVG files are designed with all the cutting and scoring and they've all been measured so they fit so all I have to do is trim off any tabs that I don't want like this and then to think of different and unique ways that I can use each of these pieces to make my album. So these are going to be flips that come from the bottom and the top of my page and I think I might round the edges on those so I'm just around the corners on these so I'm just going to do that now. I'll just do that and then I'm just going to put my cutting board to the side. I'm just going to quickly ink up the edges that I haven't already inked up and I am using Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and so of course you don't have to ink if you don't want to. I just think it looks nice. thinking around those edges that we trimmed the tabs off and I'm going to do the same on this one. I could have done this before I cut the tabs off but I think we get a much better finish if you don't fold the tabs that you're going to cut off. So that's those two, pop that to the side. I'll bring my album back the view and I'm just going to glue them down along the top and bottom like so. So I'll get out my glue and I am using Helmer's fabric glue. Um, this is easily available to me in Australia. I don't have to purchase it online and I find that fabric glue is great because it doesn't make my paper or cardstock buckle so that's why I use this one but you use any glue you want or use tape if that's what you prefer so I'm just going to line this up along the top of my page like so I'm going to bring it as close to the this edge as I can so that it doesn't interfere along here. Not that it matters too much because we have this little page gusset. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
this down. I'm just going to look at the other side, make sure I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to burnish it down good. Make sure she sticks. And I'm going to do the same with this piece, but it's going to go at the bottom. So again, a bit of glue on this tab. sitting together. I feel like this one could come over a little bit. Looks good. So I will burnish that down. A bit of glue just came out there so I'll just get rid of that. Okay so now I'm going to make some little envelopes that will flip out. So I will just pop this to the side. I think I'll have my envelopes flipping this way today. So I'll pop that out. And uh, actually, shall we just bring that back and we will, let me think about this. Um, yeah, let's put our mats on now. So I'm just going to round the edge of my mat here. And a little bit of ink on there. Wait for my glue to join the party. And so this is the E6 mat, which is going on my E2 flip or pocket. Pocket, but now flip and press it down okay and i'm just going to do the same for the bottom one and also the insides of each one Okay, so I have just finished matting those two flips. So one flips up this way and one flips up down this way. So now I'm going to make my little envelopes. So we can pop this to the side and bring out these bits and pieces here. And those, I'll put these are the F5 pieces. These are the F3 pieces, and these are the F2 pieces. Now, 
they are all pockets but I'm not using them all as pockets so what I need to do is trim some tabs off and I am going to flip it from one side so I do not need the tab on one side nor do I need the tab on the bottom of these two F2 pieces. So I'm going to cut off one tab off the side and the bottom tab off those two. For these ones, F3, these are going to be the top of the flips of my envelopes. So I only need these pieces here. I do not need the side tabs. So I'm going to cut the side tabs off those two pieces like that. And then these two, I am using as pockets. So we're going to leave them exactly as they are. So we'll pop those there. So I was just going to have my cutting tool, my cutting board and trim those little tabs off. Like so. So you might have noticed that some of the pieces I've got um, the lace borders, or lace edges, and some don't. And that's another reason why I call these um, album files, sorry, um, versatile because I can make a really fancy, pretty, girly, feminine album with these pieces that have the lace edges. Or I can make an album that is much more plain and simplified using these pieces that have got straight edges. And for every straight edge, see I nearly cut that bit off, but I didn't. Phew. I'm going to cut this bottom one off. That's why I put the crosses there. I get talking and I forget what I'm doing. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. Something where I nearly made a mistake. That's the piece I'm, yeah, I'm definitely cutting that one off. There we go. So I've cut all those pieces off. They can go in the bin. Put my cutting tool aside board and then with this one um, tab that we have left I'm just going to fold that over and finish it down and that's where we're going to attach it to our page and the same with this one and they're going to be cute little envelopes then I'm going to attach these which are going to be our uh, top for the lippy bits to the top, but I might actually uh, just ink up all my pieces now that I've trimmed. So I'll just quickly go around and ink it up. Not that you'll probably see some of it, but better to be better to do it than not, I think. So this is the sort of back piece of our envelope. And then I'll just ink this like this. And that one. And because it's a flip, I better do the other side as well. And that one. And that's going to go on there. And then I'll do the same with this one. And the other side, because it's a flip. And this bit. Okay, right, and pop that to the side. So I am just going to put some glue. I'm just going to burnish that down. I'm just going to put some glue on this tab and then attach it to the top of this, making sure that my little tab's on this side. So let's go ahead and do that for both of these. Finish 
that down. Cute. And the same with this one. Put some glue on this tab. Come on. There we go. Put this one down. Line it up at the top. So that I'm happy with that. And finish that. So we have attached our F3 little top pieces to the F2 bottom pieces with just the one tab there. And then I'm going to put my mat on the top of these. So this is my mat for that. So I'll just put a bit of glue on there. That was rather a lot of glue for a very little piece. Guess that won't be going anywhere. Lay that down. Squidge it over a little fraction. Like so. And the same here. here and put a hole there because that is where I want to put my little closure so I'm going to do that on one of these and I'm using my leather punch but you can also use a crocodile and then I'm going to lay this one down on here and mark it so that hopefully they are the same Put a hole in that one as well. Right. Now I can put my little um, closures there, but I'm also going to need a closure down the bottom here, and that's where these little fellows come in. So these are my little pockets that are going to go down the bottom. So first thing I'm going to do is take those two and attach my mats. So, more glue. And when my glue gets to the end, it starts to the end of the bottle, every time I pop it back up again, it kind of um, bubbles out of the top. I don't know why that is, but so it does. So that's one, and then the other one. this top section and I'm going to just attach it by the bottom tab to start with so I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and flat and I'm going to pop a bit of glue on that long tab there and I'm going to line this up along the bottom and it down. I'm just going to pop that tab in so I can make sure that it's lined up the way I want it to be and it is. I'm just going to burnish along the edge there and now I can line up this bottom one with this bottom section here with this top section to hopefully um, you know what, I'm just going to check, I'm going to make it like a little policy envelope style, like um, with the little circles, like we did this one. So I'm just going to cut out my circles first to make sure that they actually fit on where I want to put them. So I'm just using this little circle punch, which may be half an inch. I'm just going to I'll cut all four out for now. I want two for the top, actually. 
I need eight because I'm doing two envelopes. That's four, that's one envelope. And one, two, three, four for the other one. So what I want to do is make sure that when I put one of these down, oh, see it's pretty tight fit, that it, I'm going to put a I'm going to put a hole in a hole in this one where I think it should go, sort of you know the middle ish, and it did not go all the way through, so I'll just poke that out with my tool there. Right, so I'm just going to line it up. So it's actually right down here and put a little mark where I want it and I will not be able to get to that with my leather punch so I need my awl which I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, I left it sitting on my bench, it's okay. And I'm just going to poke with my awl a little hole in there. If you can see that hole there and then I'm going to line it up on this one so hopefully I draw a little hole there they will look somewhat the same and I can poke a hole in this one too there we go so that one's ready to attach okay so this is where we're up to we've poked our holes in that one and that one's just about finished what we can do now is we can put the little mat in here so that we don't see these tags tabs so i'm going to put this one on here and you know i've cut too many mats i have i've cut too many mats oh well that's okay we have choices so this is the f8 mat that we, I'm going to pop it on the inside so the inside of my envelope looks smart as well. And pop that on there. And then I will put this one together in the same way. So I will burnish that bottom long tab on our little F5 piece, pocket, pocket piece, and pop that one down, I'm going to fold in the corners, uh, the edges so I can see that it's lined up where I want it to be, push that one down, yep, happy with that, push it down. And then I can put the mat on this one as well. And then the inside looks nice and neat as well. Okay. Right, so I'm going to put those two little babies aside and finish making this little, these little um, policy envelope catches. So for each one of these, we need two of these. So I'm going to put some glue on each one, on one of each pair. Like that. And it's going to stick. And then just pop that one on top. Press it down nice and firm. Stick them all together. So I'm going to do that for all four. Okay, so I have my all four of my little pieces here. 
um, the little circles, two for each envelope. And I'm just going to give them a little bit of ink around the edges. a little plain on their own. And this one. And this one. has already got a hole in the top one because I used it as the little tester so I'm going to make sure that I've lined that one up and put and put a hole through that and I feel like that's pretty good so I'm just going to line them up with the next one and cut them out so that they're all sort of similar this one line up that hole and go through the hole that's already there and the one underneath and then I will have four of these with holes in them and just right done so then I have these brads that are big gold brads probably would have liked something a bit smaller but you know I like to use what I have I'm going to start by threading my tab through my little hole and poking it in this bottom one here. And that's that little bottom pocket which we're going to fold up shortly but it's so much easier, I don't know if I'm in camera, to put these on when you haven't actually done the pockets yet. And squash that up. And do the same with this one, so this is the bottom of the bottom pocket here. That one in there and slide it in here and squish out those prongs nice and flat and then because this is a little pocket I'm just going to grab a little bit of sticky tape I'm just using plain tape and I'm going to put it down over those prongs so that those prongs don't stop anything from sliding in and same on this one just plain old sticky tape right no I don't think I need that anymore and then I'm going to do the top one so I'm going to turn it over and oh this is where I need a bit of string uh, and these two bits here that I cut off previously from when I was doing something else will do the job and I do need that sticky tape. I'm going to thread the string through the hole here like so and with a little bit of tape I'm going to take that end down. And then I'm going to take my brad and my little circle and I'm also going to push that through that hole and flatten out those prongs. All nice and flat. And I'm going to do the same on this one. Put my bit of string through. And stick it down with just a little bit of tape. Like so. And then I'm going to get my little circle and a brad and push that through the hole as well and flatten those prongs. Nice and flat. And then I can put my tape away now, I think. I 
have the mats for that top flip so I can glue those straight over the top of the brad so we don't see that sticky tape or the end of my string. Or the um, prongs of the brad. And that's just gonna go on there like that. So, line it up and push it down making sure it's stuck really well around those brad prongs and then it's got a nice neat finish and then finally on that I can put the glue on these tabs on this bottom little pocket one there and one there and fold it up and press it down and now we have a cute little envelope. Look at that. And we can do it up just like this. And around there. Come on. And back around again. Like so. And there's our little envelope with the little tab on the side so we can attach it to our page. And so I'll just finish this one off by putting this mat on so pop that mat over the top of the brad prongs and the sticky tape and the end of the string line it up press it down press it nice and firmly around those brads and then the two tabs at the, on this bottom pocket who's doing that eruption um, at the top again fold it over push it down another little envelope so cute I just made this a bit tight, but there we go. Up and around. This one too. There we go. Now the only thing is we need to put a mat on the back of those. And I've cut too many mats, but that's okay. Better to have choices than not. And I'm not sure which way they should go up. I think, don't know that it matters. So this is the F8 mat that we're putting on the back of our envelopes, which is F2. So I'm going to pop that on there. Oh, sticky fingers. Cute little envelope, love it, and this one as well. And pop that one down on there, like so. Fabulous. Now I'm just going to ink around the edge of that a bit because I feel like I might have missed a bit. So I'm just going to ink along there and here on this fold and then along the top here. That's one envelope and then I'm going to do the same here. Can you hear my dog snoring? I actually wouldn't let her in the room because she snores so loudly. So I close the door and I'm working in the room on my own, but you wouldn't know it because she's sitting right at the door on the other side, snoring her head off. And I'm sure you can hear it and it's, I apologise if you can. So as I said, I cut too many of these um, 
mats, but that's okay. I'm going to just put them aside and maybe I'll use them for something else later on. Who knows? Okay, so now I can bring my album back and go to the page we were working on. And we have these um, flips here. I'm going to flip those out and I'm going to line up my envelopes on each side like so. Just like that. And they fit really nicely. So I'm going to pop that on there. So I'm just putting some glue on this tab. And I'm going to line it up on the edge here, but I'm going to make sure that it will fold with that flip underneath it, so like so. And then I'm going to do the same with this one, some glue on this tab, and I'm going to line this one up. Like so. And flip it out. Oop, it wobbled then. I felt it wobble. Flip it out and flip this one up. Make sure that that closes over that and that closes over that. And then I'm going to lift them both up. Make sure that they all flip over. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that. I'm just going to make sure that that, see that one seems to have wobbled down a little bit there. Open those up and then all that we need to do is put a base page mat over that whole lot and then there's a spot in there as well, a big spot there for a photo. Or maybe we could put a pocket in there later or, you know, you could do anything you like. Because there's so many different pieces. You could put a belly band there, you could have put a corner pocket there, or I think I might just leave it like so and do a little embellishing on one of the corners. So I'm going to line that up and press it down. So then... This flips up and this flips down and these flip across here like this and that's our page and I think that's so cute. Now I'm not sure if they are going to wobble around when we flip the page so this time instead of using magnets to hold it down I'm going to use these tiny little velcro dots. So. I'm going to put one in this top corner here and one in this bottom corner here and then hopefully it won't interfere with anything that I might want to put on here. So these are little tiny Velcro dots by Velcro and I'm just going to lift one off and put it in the top corner of this envelope here and in the bottom corner of this one here and you really can't see them barely barely noticeable and then where's the other part of that did I knock it oh there it is couldn't see it this is the other side the sort of toothy side I'm going to pull one of those off and stick it on top of that one it's stuck to my finger and the same with this one and these are far far cheaper than magnets and just as effective I think and you really cannot see them so let's close that one off and close this one so now when I move my page they won't wobble around but they just rip open like that and you can't barely see that dot same with that one I can barely see it especially on this busy paper and of course these dots are way over in the corner so you can barely see those either. So there's another page of our album done and I just love these little envelopes. I think they're so cute. So thanks very much for sticking with me today and making this little this page with these little flip envelopes and with the pockets with the flips underneath for lots of space for photos and 
using the Brodery mini album SVG files. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope you follow along with me while I do the last few pages and then um, embellish and put in some inserts and tags. Thanks very much for joining me today and I hope I see you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.